Welcome. So this video continues the series about building your own API in Node. And in this video, what I want to do is add a very important, very key piece of functionality, which is persistence. So right now, this particular API that I'm building in Node, if you recall, in the code, at the top of the code, just has hard-coded essentially a database, a database of words and their sentiment score. Rainbow 5, Unicorn 3, Doom, negative 3, Gloom, negative 2. So that there, but there, and, and I can add, um, and I can add to it. So I can I can go to a particular route and say, add purple four, and then if I go back to all, I'll see that purple is there. But as soon as I go to terminal, quit and relaunch the server, and go back, purple is gone. So I need some mechanism by which I can save the data forever. <laughs> <laughs> whether or not I'm running the server, quitting the server, not just in memory. And the way that this is done is typically with a database. Now, a database is a big topic, and I, I expect that in the, uh, what I imagine, future amount of time that I have in my life to make videos, I'll get into a lot of different facets of it. So what do we have so far is we have just like uh, data in memory. That's what I have so far. Quit the program, the data is lost. One quick and dirty way to save data, to have data persist over time, is simply to save to a text file. And it's easy to forget that you could just have a text file as a database, right? I can have a text file that has a list of words in it, word, comma, score, word, comma, score. And I could just save all the stuff and load that when I, when I run the program. A way to make this even easier is to actually save this to a JSON file. JSON standing for JavaScript Object Notation. So uh, this data, if you look at this, this is, this is JavaScript Object Notation. This syntax of having a variable full of key value pairs, that's JSON. So I can actually, nice option is just save the data to a JSON file and then uh, load that JSON file every time the server starts. So this is actually the way that I'm going to do it in this particular tutorial. But this is very limiting. First of all, if I have a massive amount of data, huge data set, this isn't going to work very well. I have to like load this like giant text file and like save this giant text file all the time. That's not going to work very well. You know, if I if I care about security and I have like private data, just having it all just sitting there in a big text file, like text file full of everybody's like logins and passwords, that's not going to work very well. So there are a lot of reasons why this isn't a particular great solution. But for a um, quick and dirty project, for understanding how things work, playing around in Node, I think this is going to be a great demonstration. But I will be making videos in the future that look at other database systems, namely one called Firebase. Firebase is something that's referred to, it's a Google product, database as service, meaning Firebase, you don't have to have your own server. You're just a program and you're like keeping track of stuff and you're like, hey Firebase, can you save this for me? I'll ask for you later. And then later you come back and say, Firebase, could I have that data? So you get an account, you sign up, you send it data, you ask for data, and it has a lot of sophisticated um, features. So that's certainly one thing you can do. And then, of course, you could use a quote unquote a real database or some type of database system. There are other database as service uh, products, by the way, so you can find those. But you could use something like uh, CouchDB or MongoDB. Uh, or uh, another uh, database that I actually like, which is very simple, which is called NEDB, I think. So these um, are all database systems that you can use with Node or other server-side programming frameworks. So uh, at some point, somebody remind me, hey, we're, but I'm definitely, I have a whole bunch of examples already for Firebase, so I intend to do that, but I'd love to uh, look into this kind of stuff and, and make some examples with that as well. But in this particular video, let's look at even just what saving a JSON file gets us. Okay, so uh, back over here, I'm going to go back to the code. And the first thing I want to do is let's just actually make that JSON file ourselves. So right here, I'm going to, in my node project, where my server code is, I'm just going to create a new file. And I'm going to call it a words.json. And in that file, instead of, um, instead of having this in the code, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to put this into words.json. So here is now a JSON file uh, with the initial data that I want for my program to start with. 
So now what I want to do in the, in, in the program is instead of having var words equal the hard-coded data, I want to just load from the file. I want to do something like, you know, if I were in like client-side P5 land, I would just say like load JSON uh, words.json. Right, I want just to load what's ever in that file and stick it in words. But this is not node code. <laughs> this is uh, P5 code. So I need a different set of syntax for that. So how do I do that in node? Well, what I need to use is the fs uh, module. So fs node, um, uh, node. I'm just going to Google fs and node. Which, and here I'm going to get the documentation for the file system API, which is built in part of node. It's not an extra thing I have to install. So this is the documentation, documentation for it. There's a lot, a lot of functions. What I'm looking for is one called read file. And right here. So you can see, first of all, there's fs.read file and fs read file sync. So why would I use one versus the other? This is something I definitely want to talk about. But let's just, at first, and actually I'm going to start with using read file sync. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say var fs equals require fs. I think that's right. This is like importing the file system package. It's built in as part of Node. I don't have to install it, but I do have to reference it in an import or require statement. And then I want to say words equals fs read file sync words.json. And let's just see, and then I'm going to say console.log words. Let's see what's happening here. Ah, OK. So it runs, and look, I read the file. There's the file. Perfect. There's my contents. What is that? So one thing you have to realize is the Node file system package is just reading the raw data of files and writing the raw data out. It doesn't know, oh, I want this to be like JSON and all of that. So if I have that raw data from the file, but I actually want it to be JavaScript and JavaScript object, I need to parse it. And there's a quick and easy way of doing that. So actually what I want to do is I'm going to say, I'm just going to say var data equals that. And then I'm going to say var words equals JSON parse data. So this is something you're going to see once I'm using a, a local files. When I want to read a file, I need to interpret it as JSON. When I have a JavaScript, I need to interpret it as a JavaScript object before I can use it. When I have a JavaScript object and I want to save it to the file, I need to convert it to just plain old text and then save it to the file. So let's look how that works now. And you can see, there we go. So now my server is reading that stuff. So we've got step one in that everything should work as it did before. All, and I could add something, but I'm still going to have the problem. As soon as I quit the server <laughs> and relaunch it, anything that I've added will be gone. So how do I now have persistence? Where in my code do I want to save data to the file itself? Well, I want to do that anytime I add something new to this list. And if I go back to the server program, the only time I add something new to the list is right here under add words, add word. So this is where I want to save data. Now this brings me to another important point, which I glossed over, which I will come over here to discuss for a second. Sync versus no sync. So there are both read file sync. That's a function as part of the node file system package. And there is also read file without the word sync. There's also write file sync and just write file. What's the difference? The difference is this is synchronous, or also known as like a blocking line of code. Meaning, if I come back here, if I'm using the sync function, the next line of code will not execute until that action has been finished. And in this case, that's what I want. When the server starts up, I don't want to do anything actually until the data has been read. So per, I want to use the synchronous version, so I load the data and it makes, I don't have to have a callback and it makes writing the code a little bit simpler. However, if I'm going to perform an action where I'm reading and writing to files, while a user is making an API request, I don't want to use the sync method because that'll actually lock up the server while it's waiting to do this operation. I want to use the non-sync, asynchronous version so a callback will happen and the server can still listen for other connections and that type of thing. So this is now a moment where right here under um, add word, I want to write the data to back to the file but not, but asynchronously. So let me show you how that works. So first of all, um, this is a little error handling that we built in last time. So I don't want to write the data if there, a score wasn't given. So I want to write the data right here. So I can say now, 
write file uh, words. Oh, let's let's look at the documentation. Uh, let's look for write file. Write file. So it looks like write file. I need to give it the file name and the data, and there's some other options and that sort of thing. So, but I'm going to do it simply. I need to say write to words.json. And now a call, uh, the data, which is words, and then a callback, uh, finished, I'll call it. And then I could say function finished. You know, maybe it gets an error or something. I don't actually know. I should look this up. <laughs> Just to say console log all set. So let's look at this now and see what happens. Now, now first of all, I've made a, a big I've made a big mistake already. But let's just see what happens anyway, even with my mistake. <laughs> Probably going to get an error or something like that. So the, the server has restarted. It's listening and waiting. Let's go to the add route. And I'm going to say, uh, I want to add the word purple and the score three. Now, I, write file is not defined. OK. Oops, silly me. I actually just made a mistake in my code where I need to say fs. I need to refer to that file system module, that package, fs.write file. But that's not the error I was expecting. Uh, the server should restart. OK, it has. Hit refresh. Hmm, thank you for your word, but let's look at, ah, crashed. Unexpected token, blah, 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 object, object. It couldn't figure out how to write that to a file, right? Because once again, just as if I'm reading data from a file, I'm getting the raw bytes, and I need to parse it as a JavaScript object before I can use it, now what I need to do is I need to turn it into text-based data before I write it to the file. And the way to do that, I can say just var data equals JSON dot, the opposite of parse or the inverse is stringify. So I can say stringify words and then write that data to the file. So now that I've done that, now one thing I want to do actually is I want to stop using Nodemon because Nodemon restarts the server uh, every time, um, oops, uh, I have, oops, what's going on here? Error, uh, undefined one, unexpected token, JSON. Oh, you know what? I, I messed up the file. <laughs> so this is what I wrote to the file because when I made my mistake. <laughs> so that's why it's not working. Um, so the reason why I don't want to use Nodemon right now is because uh, every time I rewrite that file, it thinks like, oh, something changed and it's going to restart the server, which will mess things up. So right now, I just want to manually stop and start the server myself to make sure things are good. So OK. So now the server starts. It reads the data from the file. Then uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to now go to this route again. And I'm going to hit Enter. Thank you for your word. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to look. And look, it's there. Oh, but I lost the formatting. Like my JSON file is all just one long thing. So one thing that, that's, I mean, this is sort of like a small point, And sometimes it, it, it could matter in various scenarios. But since we're talking about it, I might as well talk about it. Um, this stringify function takes the JavaScript object and kind of makes it a string with as few characters as possible. So no white space to make it kind of human readable. But I can use some other arguments. Um, and I can add, like, uh, I forget why you put null there <laughs> to look at the documentation for stringify. But uh, two meaning that I want to use two spaces for an indent. Um, so if I, if I do this and I restart the server. And by the way, purple is already there. So purple is now there forever. And I can go to uh, pink and add the number six. Thank you for your word. And if I go back and I look at that, we can see there we go. So every time I go to that route, it rewrites the entire file with the current list of words. Every time I quit the server and start the server back up, it reads the list of words. So this is the full round trip. You know, there's lots of inefficiencies and issues, again, with scalability and privacy. But this works for a simple project where you just want to save a high score list or a table of words in their sentiment score. You can do something like this. And I'm sure you can imagine some other scenarios where just this basic idea is plenty good enough. Let me say another few things about this, though, before I move to the end of this video. One is that I've kind of made a little bit of a mistake here, which is that even if something goes wrong here, I still send the reply like, thank you for your word. So really, probably, I should wait to send a reply to the client who added this word until that file has finished being written. So I would say it probably makes sense to, um, to put that in here. 
and I'm going to send the reply actually. And, and because I had this error checking, I have to send the reply up here. I can think about if there's a better way. But I'm going to have, if there's no score, I send back a message, score is required. And if it gets the data, if it gets the word, adds it, writes the file, and all that is successful, then I'm going to say, and you know what I think is useful in an API? Is for a word to actually, um, for an API to just send you back the data that you've sent it. And then I could say something like status uh, success. So in other words, sometimes when you're making an API request or you're adding something, you're sending some data to an API, and you're doing that like many, many times, as a client, when you get a reply back, you need to match it with which one you sent. So if you get some information back that you can match, that can often be helpful. So even though this is redundant and I don't personally need this information, I think it's useful to add. So and I did sort of a very awkward thing where my variables all have the same name, but this will, this will actually should work. So let's uh, restart the server one time. We can see I've, get, I've got all the words that I added before. And now if I go back and I say add um, uh, um, uh, flower uh, seven, and I hit enter, success, the word flower was added. And if I go to all, we can see flower is in there, pink is in there, purple is in there. And I can even restart the server. I restart the server and there it all is again. So this is the full round trip of how to receive from a GET request through a route data from a user, save that data to a file, and have the server always keep track of that data. So um, it, I'm still got more to do in, in terms of building this API, which is actually like get some text and produce a sentiment score. I need to look at, well, how would I build like a client, a front end that would actually like interface and interact with the API? But this, at least now we've seen a little bit about saving data. Thanks for watching.